This is the Curlin 4000 CMS, which is an ambulatory infusion system that you will be utilizing in administering IV therapy. The device has five therapy modes, continuous, PCA, TPN, intermittent, and variable. We will be using PCA therapy, continuous therapy, and TPN therapy for this in service. The pump is small and very easy to use. It weighs about 17 ounces. The 4000 CMS can utilize an IV bag, a bottle, or a pre-filled syringe as well. The bag sizes range from 50 milliliters to 3,000 milliliters. Identify the breakaway tab on the administration set. Twist and remove this breakaway tab attached to the yellow flow stop. This will cause a spring in the flow stop to prevent flow from the set. You may also want to close the slide clamp to be safe. Spike the IV bag. If there is any air in the bag, it will be important to remove it before or during priming. Open the slide clamp and then squeeze the flow stop clip to allow fluid to flow through the IV set tubing. Release the flow stop when the line is fully primed. The priming volume of the PCA set is 3 milliliters and the epidural yellow stripe tubing is 4 milliliters. Be sure that you subtract this from the bag volume when programming the infusion. On the other administration sets, the priming or fill volume of the set is indicated on the package. Insert the blue tubing guide into the receptacle on the right side of the pumping chamber, indicated by a blue arrow, blue to blue. Be sure the tubing is positioned from below and through the cutout in front of the door latch. Insert the tubing on top of the gray curved pumping surface and center it. Insert the yellow flow stop into the receptacle on the left side of the pump, indicated directly below the yellow arrow, yellow to yellow. The flow stop will slide into the receptacle. There is no confirming click. Make sure that the tubing is slightly pushed into the black air and line sensor that is directly above the yellow arrow in the pumping chamber. The tubing should sit in the notch between the two black posts. Close the door of the pump and push down on the lift to open label on the latch to close it securely. The top two rows, or eight keys of the keypad, are most important. They include the on-off, run-pause, yes-enter, no-change, and the up and down arrow buttons. Turn on the pump by pressing the on-off button in the upper left corner. The Curlin logo and pump name will be displayed in sequence. Then the pump will go through a self-test sequence. You will see the small LEDs beside the on-off button labeled Run, Standby, and Alarm. The LEDs will flash green, yellow, and red in that order. The pump will indicate self-test OK, and then you will see a battery bar graph. The battery should last between three and four days. If you power the pump on and you see the battery is low, you would want to change the pump batteries at that time. After the sequence is done, you will get a screen which says Enter to Select, and the highlight bar will be on Program in preparation for using the pump. Only the biomedical staff will use the biomed line. There will be a highlighted area or black bar on the pump display screen. The up and down arrow keys may be used to move the highlighted bar. The Yes Enter button must be pressed to confirm or accept what is highlighted, and the No Change button must be pressed to change what is highlighted. The rest of the keypad is for numeric entry. The battery door is located on the back of the pump. Turn the pump off. Insert a penny, a key, or a flat object into the slot at the bottom of the battery door and push down to depress the metal ball at the bottom of the door. While the ball is depressed, slide the door down and remove it from the pump. Install two new C-cell batteries with the positive poles at the top of the battery compartment. Slide the door back into place with the UL seal at the top and push up until a click is heard to close the battery door, and then turn the pump back on.
With the program word highlighted, press the Yes Enter button to select. The pump will have two or three options to choose from. Use the down arrow button to highlight Repeat RX if Resume is highlighted. Choose Repeat and press Yes. The pump will slowly scroll through the program so it can be reviewed. When it reaches Done, press the Yes Enter button to advance to the Run screen or press the No Change button to review the program by hand. You will be prompted to confirm the therapy line by line as a safety feature. At the end, press the Yes button. Spike a new bag. Press the Run Pause button to start the next bag of IV medication. With the program word highlighted, press the Yes Enter button to select. The pump will have two or three options to choose from. Use the down arrow button to highlight Repeat RX if Resume is highlighted. Choose Repeat and press Yes. The pump will slowly scroll through the program so it can be reviewed. When it reaches Done, press the Yes Enter button to advance to the Run screen or press the No Change button to review the program by hand. You will be prompted to confirm the therapy line by line as a safety feature. At the end, press the Yes button. Spike a new bag. Press the Run Pause button to start the next bag of IV medication. With the program word highlighted, press the Yes Enter button to select. The pump may have two or three options to choose from. Use the down arrow to select New Program and press the Yes button. Select the unit. MG will be flashing. If this is the desired unit, press the Yes Enter button. If not, press the No Change button to change the unit to MCG or ML. Once the desired unit is showing, press the Yes Enter button to advance in the menu. Enter the desired concentration and press the Yes Enter button to advance. If ML was selected, the concentration line will not be present. The administration route choices are IV, epidural, or SQ. If you need to change the administration route, press the No Change button until the desired administration route is showing. If the desired administration route is showing, press the Yes Enter button to confirm and advance. A loading dose is a one-time bolus given at the beginning of the infusion by a clinician. If a loading dose is required, enter the amount using the number keys and press the Yes Enter button to confirm. If a loading dose is not required, press the Yes Enter button to confirm the zero. The titrate feature allows maximum and minimum amounts of medication to be programmed as a safety measure. Press the Yes Enter button to confirm off and advance. Press the Yes Enter button to confirm and advance to the prescription menu. Use the number keys to enter the bag volume. Press the Yes Enter button to confirm and advance. Use the number keys to enter a basal rate or leave the number at zero if there is no continuous rate. Press the Yes Enter button to confirm and advance. The next line is the bolus line. This is the patient activated dose. Enter the bolus amount and press the Yes Enter button to confirm and advance. If there is not to be a patient activated dose, then confirm zero. If you have programmed a bolus, you must program an interval. Use the number keys to enter the interval time and press the Yes Enter button to confirm and advance. Use the number keys to enter the bolus per hour and press the Yes Enter button to confirm and advance. Press the Yes Enter button to complete the program. The pump will advance to the Run screen. There are four options on the Run screen. Press Run to start, No to review, Option, or Prime buttons. This is when you would prime the set using the pump. Release any clamps on the set. Press the Prime button once, located on the lower right side. A Disconnect Patient Warning screen will appear. Press Yes to exit, or continue by holding down the Prime button to start priming the set. If there is air in the bag, make sure to remove it first. The word Priming will flash, and the pump will pump fluid through the infusion set while priming. When the button is released, priming will stop. If additional priming is needed, then press the Prime button again, and release when finished. When priming is complete, press the Yes Enter button to exit the Prime screen and return to the Run screen. If you are ready to run the program, press the Run Pause button to start the infusion. 
The following information can be viewed on the screen while the infusion is running. Bolus dose, total volume infused, number of bolus administered and number of bolus attempted, remaining volume, a bar graph depicting the amount of the total bag that has been infused. All of the information will flash individually in a large font with the main screen. This is helpful for those who want to review the program while working with the patient. Note that the bolus amount flashes on the top of the screen while the bolus is being given. Also notice that the confirmation beep comes at the end of the bolus. If the patient presses the bolus button and the time interval is not completed, they will hear an immediate beep. The screen will display alert bolus requested. Press the run pause button. Press the yes enter button to confirm resume. Press the no change button to review the program. Use the arrow button to advance the highlighted bar to the variable you would like to change. If the variable you'd like to change is on the second page, arrow down to next and hit the yes enter button. Press the no change button to erase the current information and then enter the new amount. Press the yes enter button to confirm the new setting. Continue to press the Yes Enter button to confirm and advance through the program until you reach the Done prompt. Confirm by pressing the Yes Enter button to return to the Run screen. To restart the infusion, press the Run Pause button. Once the infusion is complete, the pump will alarm and Infusion Complete will flash on the screen. To silence this alarm, press the Silence button. If you would like to record your total information for the bag, do it at this time. When you repeat the program, it will clear all the current prescription infusion amounts on the screen. The shift totals and hourly totals will remain when reviewed using options. We have gone over programming a new program, changing the program and hanging a new bag, and using the same prescription. Everything else you would like to do with the pump is found on the options menu. Let's assume that you want to give a clinician bolus. Note that the pump does not have to be paused to give a clinician dose. First, press the Help Options button to pull up the Options menu. Use the down arrow button to highlight the clinician dose feature. The feature will read Off, and you want to press the No Change button to change Off to On. Press the Yes Enter button to confirm On and enter the clinician dose feature. Enter the clinician dose amount, then press Yes Enter. Press Yes Enter again to confirm and exit the feature. Press the Yes Enter button to confirm the Accept option. The clinician dose will be administered at this time. When the clinician dose is being administered, it will show the amount being given and the bar graph will advance as the dose is being administered. The pump will beep when the dose is complete. If a clinician dose is to be stopped, use Pause, Edit to Zero, and Restart. If a lock level is programmed, it will ask for a code. Use the lock code you entered for security purposes in order to program the clinician dose. Let's now check and clear our shift totals. Once again, that is found in the Options menu. Before you enter and clear the shift totals, record the remaining volume in milliliters from the main screen. Press the Help Options button to enter the Option menu. Use the down arrow button to highlight the shift total feature. The feature will read Off, and you want to press the No Change button to change Off to On. Press the Yes Enter button to confirm On, and enter the Shift Total feature. Review the information and record your data. The information on the screen will be Volume Infused, Clinician Dose, Amount Infused, Bolus Given and Attempted. To clear the information, press the No Change button to change Exit to Clear. The Done line will flash and indicate Clear next to Done. Press the Yes Enter button to clear the information. The screen will show that the fields are now at zero. Press the Yes Enter button to exit the feature. Press the Yes Enter button to accept options as it scrolls all options and returns to the Run screen. To view the features on the Options menu, select Help Option. The following features will be shown as the down arrow is pressed. Lock level, clinician dose, shift totals, 
hourly totals, clear hourly totals, downstream occlusion setting, air sensitivity setting, audio alarm level, and power check. At the end of scrolling, you will be at the Accept Options prompt. Select Yes Enter to accept changes or No Change button to leave without making any changes. Consult the operator's manual for details on the lock levels. We have already described clinician dose and checking and clearing shift and hourly totals. Hourly totals will show you a 24-hour running total of the total infused, amount given, bolus given, and bolus attempted. The downstream occlusion pressure setting is defaulted to low. If you are getting nuisance occlusion alarms, then you may want to change the low limit to high. You would change this by pressing the No Change button to change low to high, and then the Yes Enter button to accept the setting. On the next line, the pump has an air in line sensor that is defaulted to 0.5 milliliters. Pressing the No Change button allows you to incrementally change the sensor setting from 0.1 milliliters, 0.5 milliliters, 2.0 milliliters, and to off. Select the proper value and press Yes Enter to accept the change. The audio line displays the volume level between 1 and 9. To change, press the No Change button and enter a number between 1 and 9 using the numeric keypad. The pump will beep once. Then press Yes Enter to accept the volume level. If your pump has been set up to deliver continuous infusions, when administering some antibiotics, for example, this is how you would create a new program for the continuous mode. With the program line highlighted, press Yes Enter. Select the unit. ML will be flashing. If this is the desired unit, press the Yes Enter button. If not, press the No Change button to change the unit to MG or again to MCG or ML. Once the desired unit is showing, press the Yes Enter button to advance in the menu. For this program, we are going to use ML. Press the No Change button to add a delay time to the therapy, or press the Yes Enter button to accept the default delay, which is off. The Titrate feature allows maximum rates to be programmed as a safety measure. Press the No Change button to use the titrate mode in the therapy. Press the Yes Enter button to accept the default, which is off. Press the Yes Enter button to advance to the next screen to begin entering prescription information. Use the numeric keys to enter the total bag volume that you are hanging on the patient. Enter the amount of the total volume that you wish to infuse into the patient. Enter the rate of infusion as a value in milliliters per hour. Note that the pump cannot be programmed to infuse at a rate higher than 400 milliliters per hour. Enter the desired rate using the numeric keys. If titrate limits were on, this value could be less. Based on the volume to be infused and the rate entered, the pump will automatically calculate the total time of infusion in hours and minutes, and this time will be highlighted and flashing in black bold. Press Yes to accept the total time of infusion. If you select No, the display clears and you can enter an alternate time. Once entered, this time will be used to recalculate the rate, which will flash above in the rate line. Press the Yes Enter button to confirm the new rate and time. The keep vein open rate is used to maintain an open line to the patient by using a very low flow rate from the pump. The default rate is 0.1 milliliters per hour. Press the Yes Enter button to accept the KVO rate. Press the Yes Enter button to complete programming and then start the infusion using the Run button. If your pump has been set up to deliver total parenteral nutrition infusions when administering TPN therapy, this is how you would create a new program for the TPN mode. With the program line highlighted, press the Yes Enter button to begin programming a TPN therapy. The first line prompted is the delay line. The clock on the pump must have the current date and time set before using delay mode. The date and time are set in the Biomed Options menu. Press the No Change button to activate the delay. Press Yes Enter again. Enter a delay time in hours and minutes. Press the Yes Enter button to accept the time. Enter no more than 24 hours from the current date to begin infusion using the numeric keypad as month, day, and year with two digits for the current date. Press Yes to accept the date and Yes again to accept all date and time parameters. Use the numeric keys to enter the total bag volume that you are hanging on the patient. 
Enter the amount of the total volume that you wish to infuse into the patient. Skip infusion rate with the down arrow. Enter the time in hours and minutes when you want to begin a gradual increase in the rate of infusion to administer the TPN solution to the patient. Press yes to accept. Enter the time in hours and minutes when you want to begin a gradual decrease in the rate of infusion to reduce delivery of the TPN solution to the patient. Press yes to accept. Enter total amount of time for infusion. Press yes to confirm and calculate the rate. The rate is auto calculated and highlighted with the cursor. Press the Yes Enter button on the Rate and Ramp fields to accept. The Keep Vein Open rate is used to maintain an open line to the patient by using a very low flow rate from the pump. The default rate is 0.1 milliliters per hour. Press the Yes Enter button to accept the KVO rate. Press the Yes Enter button to complete programming and then start the infusion using the Run button. A few tips on solving common alarm problems. If you obtain an air and line alarm, pause the pump. Press yes to resume. You will be taken to the run prime screen. Disconnect the line from the patient. Press the prime button to move the air through the pumping mechanism and remove all air from the line. Press yes to return to the run screen and press run to resume the infusion. If you obtain frequent downstream occlusion alarms, you can change the sensitivity setting in the Help Options menu. Press the Help Options button and use the down arrow to move the highlighted bar to the down occlusion line. Change Low to High by pressing the No Change button and then confirm the change by pressing the Yes button. Continue pressing the Yes Enter button until you reach the Accept Option line. Press the Yes Enter button to accept the option change. Upstream occlusion alarms usually occur when the bag has run dry. To silence this alarm, press the pause button and check the bag. If you need a new bag, replace the bag. Use the down arrow to highlight the repeat RX line and press yes enter. Hit yes again. The pump will slowly scroll through the program so it can be reviewed. Hit yes again. Press run to start the infusion again.